Hey, buddies, Potemic Whiskey here, and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization VI as Norway in the BBG mod, where we have the Giga Chad fish resource, fishing boat yields. And this isn't even our final form. We haven't even ascended. We haven't even transcended. We haven't even reached our ultimate power level. Our trap card has not been activated, and uh, I've run out of analogies for not being at our power level yet. But look, the world enters into the medieval era. I thought I'd already done this turn. Am I crazy? What? I would like world ideology. I think it would be good if we could get monarchy to get past there. It probably won't be monarchy. I don't particularly care who gets the victory points. Like, you can have them. I don't care. Uh, it would be kind of nice if I did get the growth. I kind of wish. I hope. I would wish for a fish and I hope for a pope. Uh, it looks like Hojo got the extra growth. Zhao, a classical republic, of course. Well, I mean, like, whatever. Fine. Monarchy didn't pass. Who asked? Hey, you. Yeah, that's right, you. Did you know that I'm launching a plushie on Makeship? And that it's a limited edition, limited time only available thing? And I need to sell 200 of them for any of them to ship? No, you didn't. But go ahead and check out the link in the description and linked in the comment of the video and get yourself an exclusive limited time only potato plush, which some of the proceeds go towards supporting me and my channel. And you end up with a beautiful little plush. Here's some pictures of the plush in various places in my house. Here's a rabbit for scale. It's a beautiful, gorgeous little plush. And I would really appreciate it. If you guys want to, and you have the spare cash, grab a plush, because it's really cute. It's the first piece of merch I've ever done. And so I would love if it was a success. Back to the video. But yeah, we have a lot we need to do this era. Uh, next turn, I need to buy myself an Inquisitor. You need to come over here and get that fish going. You go ahead and get that right there. Oh, we got a little bit of a tile bug. What it actually is, is three food, two production and one gold. A little bit of a tile refresh bug. I don't know what causes that. I think it's a mod. Unless, does anyone play the game unmodded where you get those overlapping tile yield displays? It's some kind of weird little... That's a caravel! Oh my god, I can actually, I can actually fight caravels. But I should totally go get this uh, meteor site that I've been delaying on getting. I'm surprised that I'm seeing caravels this early into the game. Although I probably shouldn't be surprised considering how much science people are making. Hello, Wilhelmina. Nice to meet you. A pleasure, I'm sure. We just finished the holy site and it's a pretty darn good adjacency holy site. The city is following my religion, so it's now getting that nice production, I assume. Excuse me. Ah, uh, I do have work ethic, right? The hell? Plus 10 adjacency. Holy side adjacency. <gasps> oh, work ethic has changed. Oh, they changed work ethic. I see. Oh, dude. I misinterpreted that. I just thought it worked the way that it worked. Ah, uh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see. Right. Well, let's go ahead and purchase a shrine because that's worth two production, eh? Yeah, all right. Purchase the shrine in here. We'll get the granary. We'll get the monument. We'll get the stave church in that order. That's still pretty good. That's six production per city from Holy Sites. I regret my choice now. I wish I'd gone for a different belief. Although to be fair, what would I have gone for? I don't know. I plan to build a shrine in the temple in every city. And I think six production is pretty damn reasonable. That's like working two early game mines. I think that's still within the realm of possibility. I guess I just, I brain fired it. See, this is the problem with playing a, uh, the BBG mod is sometimes some things are changed and some things aren't. And my brain just sometimes autofills the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, we definitely want to harbor. So we'll place that harbor. We'll go granary monument in the city so that we can get it growing. It's going to, the city's not going to be very fish, fishing boat pilled. So we won't be worrying about that too much. Based and fish boat pilled. Uh-huh, you go this way. Uh, my people... Well, I don't plan to settle for a while, so I can make that promise, actually. Because I'm building up my economy right now, and then overwhelmingly in the next era I should explode. Holy crap, that's a beautiful volcano that we found. I've never seen yields like that. Well, I have seen yields like that, but I was trying to be dramatic. Yeah, we definitely want to try and get some cities settled. Do I have any luxuries? I do have a luxury here that's sitting around unimproved. I do have plantation tech, so I can get plantation for the sugar. Another fishing boat. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Continue to explore. Coupe has gone on pretty explore heavy we can go ahead and pillage that and get the free chariot that's another that's a little bit of military power that makes me a little bit scarier to go to war with they want to sell me a great work of writing for my diplo favor i'll take that great work of writing and then it's plus two culture per turn why wouldn't i take it there's iron working not too bad we're about to get a trader from an admiral we have our lighthouse so we do have access to another trade route i would like to get the pagoda but i think the trader is perhaps more important i could make sure that i come in here and buy an apostle to do an inquisition um i will go for i could faith purchase the pagoda but i want to save my faith for feudalism i'd also like to get a single encampment so i'll put two turns into a trader Here's what I'll do. I'll faith purchase the pagoda, put two turns into the trader. In two turns, I'll be able to place an encampment. And then, bing, bash, bosh, I can get to work 
on a great general ideally a medieval era great general um, although actually a classical era one will work fine with the berserker and that'll all align together and the reason I did that is uh, if I sat here and built the pagoda uh, when the city grows in two turns I wouldn't be able to get started on the encampment because it would be working away on something whereas if I faith purchase the pagoda I get a little bit of that faith back over those few turns not a huge amount right I'm getting what four faith or something but the influence is nice it just it just lines up my city's growth and production in a really nice way, basically, is the way to summarize what I did there. Oh my goodness, yeah, we're getting very close to a circumnavigate. We have successfully uh, revealed the majority of the map now. Oh god, there's so much potential here. I kind of wish I was in another monumentality, but I think going for the free inquiry might have been the correct play. Lovely, first civic from a new era, perfect. There's naval tradition, we absolutely plug that in. That's 13 gold and science right there. Boosh, 46 science per turn, very respectable. Let's get to work on feudalism. We're sitting on two envoys, we can take Susan to have Singapore. Perfect. Plus two. We were the first suzerain of Singapore. We can put a point into Caguana. Yes, because that'd be worth two. That'll get us two culture per turn. Or is it one culture per turn? Yeah, it's one culture per turn, which is pretty respectable. They want me to trade a crossbow. And actually, speaking of envoy missions, I should take a look here. Kabul and Samarkand want traders. Vatican City wants a harbor. That's easy. Hattusa and Singapore want conversion. Hattusa and Singapore... It might be hard to get those conversions. We're about to fill, finish the mausoleum, which is going to be huge. We're continuing to explore. Ooh, is, was that the Giant's Causeway I just spotted? No, it wasn't. It looks like it was just a cliff. My brain autofilled the Giant's Causeway. Um, but yes, we should be able to make use of berserkers and potentially caravels in this war now. Let's start the Inquisition. That's plus two era score. That's perfect. We're already making good era score. We'll want to try to convert her cities while at war, although it's going to put a big strain on our faith economy. It should be fine. And I'd like to get my Viking longships down here, potentially to get turned into caravels. I should theoretically, I should be buying crossbowmen. Okay, there's mausoleum. That's amazing. This is going to heavily carry us in terms of production, uh, in terms of faith, science, culture, all that sort of jazz. Let's make sure we put food and production as our main priorities because we want to be able to produce. It's the most important thing. Uh, we will get Zhang He. This will be a great admiral. Zhang He gives us the ability to get a free trader and increases our trade route capacity and foreign trade routes to the city provide plus two gold to both cities, which is super helpful. Uh, what's our gold trade route looking like? 18 gold for Coupe. That could be really, really good. Or I could have a sick as hell six food, six production trade route to my capital, which is worth more. The gold is really nice, but I'm thinking these newly settled cities are going to need a little bit of help to get themselves up and running. So... In fact, all of my cities are going to make use of that, I think. Uh, let's get to work on the encampment. The goal of this encampment is just to get uh, higher quality berserkers in terms of experience by having a barracks in it, but also to get a great general. So that'll be the main objective there. Uh, we do, in fact, have mausoleum. Let's get to work on Warlord's Throne. This will lower our unit's maintenance cost and give us a 25% production boost towards units. I don't know if we're going to play fully into Warlord's Throne. I do think that the meta is usually around the, um, the one that gives you uh, housing, the audience chamber, whatever it's called. That's usually the meta play. But I, you know, I thought it'd be interesting to try out new things and do different stuff. Finding more tribal villages. We're like seconds from circumnavigating. Just need to reveal a few more tiles. I want you to trade with Nidoros. Those internal trade routes are disgustingly good. My stats are insane already. Yeah, let's see if we can take out some of these boats. We may as well. I think there is some value. I think you should maybe get like a little bit of gold from killing barbs or something. Like there should be a reward aside from experience, in my opinion. Plus one era score for first technology of the era. Perfect. There's feudalism. Uh, plus two build charges on builders. While amazing is not what we're going to be going for right now. If we're going to do that, we're going to like do that and then mass purchase builders or something like that. Um, I would love to get Kilwa. In fact, I would say Kilwa is a super important part of my build this game. Now, the unfortunate thing about Kilwa is it has to be built on flat tile adjacent to coast, which kind of says to me that what I want to do here is take out scripture, temporarily plug and surf them like this then come back and backfill for a really cheap tech like military tradition quickly purchase a builder in here and that'll be a five charge builder that i can run around and do stuff with um i have more defenders i think in an ideal world i would have embrasure with victor let me have a little bit of a think about that i'm quite a bit away from my next two governor titles if i was set up correctly i would go embrasure like a garrison commander embrasure so that i get free promotions on those guys but i think perhaps a good way to go now would be to go for pingala or perhaps even reina for double adjacency on my harbors yeah i think i'm gonna go for rain uh i just really need the science though i'm gonna go for pingala i need the science um pingala would make a good 
leader in Bergen, probably. That's a city that should develop relatively quickly. We should also totally get the harbor placed in here. We'll get that stave church finished nice and quick. Uh, and then we want to head straight to Caravals. Be good if we could get a few Caravals. Where's Mercenaries? Yeah, we're heading towards Mercenaries now, so we'll be able to upgrade units. Rather than go straight for Kilwa, I'm going to take a turn. We're going to take a few turns just to get some extra longships for Caravals and some extra warriors and stuff like that where it makes sense. Come on, give me the Circumnavigate. There's it kill. Perfect, perfect. We're finding... Oh, Chinguetti is a huge find. Plus five error score for first circumnavigation. We're already up to 77 out of 85 error score. Amazing. We are almost almost already have our next Golden Age on lockdown. We've got 12 to 22 turns. It really depends on how early the era triggers here. Um, that's going to dictate how and where and when and what I do. So we're going to buy another builder in here and then immediately come up here and swap back out Serfdom for Scripture so we can get that faith rolling. Um, we super need to finish this barracks. Can I purchase the barracks? I can if I do a little bit of trading. I don't want to sell iron. I'll sell a little bit of my Diplo favor for some cash. Perfect. Now I'll come in here and I'll buy the barracks. How much is it to faith purchase berserkers? They're actually quite cheap. But now if I faith purchase berserkers plus four error score. Amazing. We just need three error scores. So one, two. And I want you to work on encampment training so that we actually have a great general to escort our berserkers. And we shouldn't need that many points. We should be able to buy a berserker like every two or three turns. We'll get them into position and we'll run them down with the assistance of hopefully caravels. All right, I think one or two more Viking longships should do the trick. Perfect. So we have fully circumnavigated the world, which feels amazing. I'm going to start bringing these guys back now to participate in the war against Indonesia. I think expansion is just always worth it. Like if you can get a war in um, at little to no cost, there's no reason not to. Think of it this way. It's like turning military units into settlers that already have buildings. It's so good. If you can get a little cheeky war in, it just it changes the game. So the era ends in 10 turns. That means I should totally start the Kilwa now. Oh, I don't have quarry tech. Okay, I need to get masonry real quick. I'll get another Viking longship. And that should be enough Viking longships, honestly. Three extra. Caguana. Who do I want to be suzerain of? I think it would make a lot of sense to start being friends with places like Chinguetti. Chinguetti also gives you plus one faith for every population or follower in your city when you send a trade route to that city. Sorry, per follower in the city that's sending the trade route. So it's really, really good faith engine. If I could get Chinguetti, my next error would be like explosive. Plus it just generally gives you faith from shrines and temples. So that's all going to work out really, really nicely in my favor. All righty then. Let's go ahead and faith purchase more berserkers. I can probably get one roughly every turn, which is really, really nice. Take me a few turns to get it. I'm mostly also waiting on the uh, the Great General too. So Indonesia, I think, is a good target here. She's not too ahead technologically and she hasn't built walls in her city. So my Berserkers should still be super effective. I won't need to get like any super hardcore technology here. Got a lot of Berserkers coming. Uh, we are now going to immediately begin building Kilwa. I'm going to do a pre-chop here. 45 production pre-chopped into a Kilwa. Um, ideally, I would have like a production bonus here too, but... We're just going to get that in eight turns. It's fine. Okay, so we have masonry. We have all the things that we want. Actually, speaking of masonry, has anyone built pyramids? Yeah, pyramids is long gone. Jebba Barkal I might be able to grab. We want to come back up here and finish cartography. The cool thing about cartography is it actually unlocks the fishery in the BPG mod, which is just like a basically a farm on the water, which is quite handy, right? Plus one food and plus one additional food of adjacent to a sea resource must be built on coastal plots. However, uh, I think that might interfere... Yeah, it's plus one production on all unimproved coast and lake tiles for this city. So uh, sh it, it, it kind of conflicts with shipyards. If you want production from your coastline. Okay, we got our first great general. I don't think we needed to run two of these projects then. Now I can probably justify building berserkers in this city as well as purchasing them. But now we have Trung Track providing plus one movement to all of these berserkers who already get plus one movement when they're outside of your territory, right? Yeah, plus two movement if a unit starts in enemy territory that's sick as hell so we're gonna have five movement berserkers running around down here and i'm just gonna consistently build berserkers from here as long as i have the iron to do so speaking of iron i think i've basically spent all my iron did i lose suzerainty of a city ah samarkand was the one giving me iron so i need to get suzerainty of them back i think uh, i'm about to get an envoy so that'll be fine there's also iron in my capital city that i'm gonna want to try to improve i mean you guys think that i talk quickly but i wasn't even beginning to show my power level all right now we have petra that's perfect that's plus two food plus two gold plus one production on all te petra Desert Tiles. We also have Mercenaries giving us access to some new cards. Most importantly, I got the extra Envoy from Mercenaries allowing me to retake Susan Tree of Samarkand. Getting back that Iron Production. You can come down here to get that Iron Improved. You can go there. Look at that. P -p 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 Pogtra. What a Pogtra Petra. Oh my goodness. Jesus Christ. I'm looking forward to really making the city pop. Pop, 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 pop. I would really like to get a Builder. So I'm going to quickly temporarily plug in the... Builder plus two actions because I want like a couple. Yeah, I need like a I need like a couple of builders. So I'll quickly build those in the city now that it's like super powered and supercharged. We have the mercenaries card. 
uh, which we will want to plug in in two turns. So I'll go ahead and research recorded history to get the governor title as well. In two turns, I'll be able to plug in the cheaper unit upgrades and be able to get these caravels on the cheap cheap. Cheap cheap. Cheap cheap sounds like a bird's name, like in bird language. Like if you, if, if I was a bird and I spoke bird language, my name would be cheap cheap for sure. Also, maybe it sounds like a Pokemon. Is that a Pokemon's name? Who knows? Pokemon people will know. Uh, plus five adjacency, that's sick as hell. I'm going to go ahead and take that. Yeah, I think I'm going to go harbor first in this era. Mm, yeah, harbor first in this era because I don't actually need the faith gain that much anymore. Oh yeah, get into that water. Look how fast these guys are. This is disgusting. Genuinely, genuinely disgusting. Uh, any, ch any chance that I would be able to purchase... Oh, I can purchase a luxury, thank you. Any chance I could be able to purchase iron from anybody? No iron available. Let's double check that because sometimes the AI is a little bit wonky about that. Yeah, nobody really has iron for sale. That's okay. We'll get the hang of it. Ooh, hide from those. Oh, Caravals have found you. So I lost my scout. Scouts just eventually die. I feel like scouts should get strong. Oh, the clutch Japan Caraval block. Oh my God, Japan saved me. Era score is above. We have a golden age secured. I could justifiably crank out a siege tower to follow up these guys in case walls get built. Be handy. I forgot to denounce. It happens. I don't know when I'm going to be ready to go to war, but I may as well denounce. Okay, Viking longships are in position, essentially. Harvest here to get Kilwa faster. Harvest here to get Kilwa faster. I've lost Susan to you of Buenos Aires. That's hurting my amenities slightly. I'd really like to get to level two with Chinguedi, though, because that plus two faith in every temple and consulate is huge. It's an extra 10 faith per turn. That's going to build up to a crescendo. Can't really faith buy anything yet. Damn it, Japan moved and got my scout killed. My troops are really passing by, but that's obviously a lie. I'm going to wait until I can do that. Right, we have fishery. We have caravels. Plus two gold from fishing boats. Very, very nice. Castle and Thracion. I'm not too enamored with building. Uh, we might build it though because it's three governor promotions, 15% production, da, 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 three merging print. print. I, the, the governor promotions are actually pretty sick. We do have recorded history now. Speaking of which, we do have another governor promotion. We will take researcher because you want that plus one science per turn per population in the city. We are going to want to get a little bit of housing in here, but we're working on the harbor. So that's fine. I don't have enough iron. You're going to go improve that iron. You're going to go I could build trading dumps. I'm not building trading dumps. We're about to get Kilwa, which is huge. Kilwa is massive for me this game. Um, so I forgot to denounce. It's going to hurt a lot to attack here without a denouncement. Let's see, can I unlock a new Cass's belly really quickly? No, I'm pretty sure the war of territorial expansion is like over here, right? Colonial war. Yeah. So I guess what we'll do is we'll declare our friendships right before we go to war. That way we can keep as many people friendly with us and trading with us. And we're just going to go ahead and declare the surprise war to get it over and done with and get some of these units condemned and stuff and pillaging. So we're going to want to do a lot of pillaging. And we also want to go ahead and take out discipline, plug in the gold card. Serfdom is fine. I'm relatively happy with the setup. We'll plug in professional army. Um, we should totally head towards monarchy right now. Um, we will get caravel, caravel, caravel. One, two, three caravels should be enough to be able to pillage and do damage and stuff like that. So we'll see what kind of defense she can mount to protect herself here. Uh, Forbidden City would be a really, really good build. I don't really have a city that I could justify building it in, except maybe Oslo, but it doesn't even have that much production. If I could get Forbidden City, that would be huge. And I want to get this anyway, because I want to get the extra diplomatic visibility with my opponent in order to be able to break them. But that is going to delay my mass production. Mass production is quite a while away anyway, so I'm going to go for printing for the for the war, the short-term war effort. Let's take, some, let's take a hit off that city. Let's do it. Early damage is good damage. Kill is about to finish, which I'm excited about. I've got more boats on the way. Oh, pair of caravels. Oh, my ships cannot win that fight, actually. It turns out without the anti-barbarian card and a promotion, Viking longships lose the caravels. <laughs> not good. Very, very not good. But there's Kilwa. Kilwa is huge for a number of reasons. A, we get three envoys. That's massive. More importantly, we get a 50% boost to the type bonus provided by a city-state. What that means is uh, we can also make alliances. That's cool. Speaking of alliances, I'll do, I'll do something here uh, to try and make this war go a little bit smoother. What that means is if we're suzerain, of Johannesburg, the city with Kilwa gets a 15% production boost. If we're Susan of two industrial city-states, every city in my empire gets a 15% production boost. So that's massive. Like if I take Chinguedi right now, I'm going to go ahead and go from like 96 faith to like 133 faith. That's because the combination of taking suzerainty is giving me a 15% bonus in this city and my trade routes are now generating a ton of faith, although it doesn't reflect on the screen here. Plus four faith. Like that's crazy, crazy, crazy good. Plus four faith here, right? Super, super, super powerful uh, ability. It's honestly why Kilwa is so good. Can I take suzerainty of another city state? 
not really i could start working on antenna narivo that's a really good one because it gives you a two percent culture boost for each great person you've earned which can really carry you in a game so i would like to be suzerain of antenna Revo. uh we did finish kilwa which puts me in an interesting place i could go for the casa that's three governor promotions in eight turns Th governor promotions are insane in this mod i think i'm gonna go for it it's I'm probably overbuilding wonders, honestly. I should be building maybe I should probably be building settlers right now while I can, but let's build let's build wonders. Let's do it. Uh so we have Siege Tower, Statue of Zeus, three archers, three spearmen, and a battering ram. For six turns of production, I would rather just faith buy berserkers uh, and send them up as a follow-up. And then you go ahead and grab me another builder so that we're prepped for next era to like get some more stuff improved. So somebody is fighting this. And it looks like it's Indonesia, so I don't want to fight either. I need to find a city-state that has a piece of land that I can go upgrade my boats in. That'd be the ideal scenario. You're here. You're going to go ahead and upgrade into a caravel. So I've got four caravels storming down the pipeline, ready to pillage the coastline, ready to fight. I think as Norway, you want to be pillaging. I think that's just like always true and based. They are building walls in here, so we need to start hitting the city. Can you hit the city? Can you hit the city? Okay, nice. We are doing damage. I forgot to bring my great general over. That was a mistake. Missed out on a little bit of efficiency there. Let's go ahead and chop here. Chop out that builder. I can immediately place that holy site. Perfect. In Oslo. Um, I will finish the harbor though. And then this builder will go ahead around and just do a little bit of improving. And I can probably take out the builder card in the near future. Oh, right. I meant to get an alliance and get someone to declare war on Dido. I just have to find someone. I just have to find someone that does not like Gitarja. All they need to do. So let's talk to Gitarja. Kupe. Kupe will join my war. Which means if I offer him a single gold, he'll join my war. Then I just have to offer him a military alliance and he'll take it for 12 gold per turn. I'll give him like a little bit of Diplo favor instead, since I care less about Diplo favor. And now I should be getting an extra plus five combat strength from the military alliance because we're both at war. Plus five combat strength against units of players. Okay, so fighting their units, I'll have plus four combat strength, not their cities. But still acceptable. But yeah, there's a ton of stuff for us to pillage down here. I'm bringing in the big boys. You step here, pillage that. There's divine right. We can switch to monarchy. Nice. Monarchy switched. Plus two era score for a new government. We didn't need that era score, but we can have it. Um, I Am I building any more builders? Let me double check here. No, I finished all my builders, so I don't need to have the builder card in temporarily. I can take that out. I definitely would like scripture. Um, I am building wonders, so gothic architecture could be really, really nice. Retainers is always an interesting and nice card to have. I don't need conscription... You could make an argument for feudal contract if I'm going to be hard building my follow-up berserkers. I also need to be thinking about how I'm going to settle the next era. Gold maintenance is nice. That's 15 gold. I'd be hard pressed to find a card worth more value unless it's charismatic leader. Charismatic leader is like super good. More envoys, especially with Kilwa. Plus two envoys actually becomes plus three envoys or plus three influence. Plus three influence is massive, especially if I'm going to be getting more of those uh, pagodas or whatever. Let me have a little bit of a think here that I'm not overplaying. I would really like to have retainers, but if I'm going to be hard building my berserkers i think i'll do this i should be able to two turn my berserkers now we have a little bit of a builder i would like to get these luxuries online that's going to be really important to my long-term game plan petra hill obviously putting a mine on the petra hill it would be nice to get the chantry plus access to spies we have our tier two government now you could make an argument for theocracy here for your faith purchasing discount but i think monarchy works a little bit better for our plants especially because we're pretty lined up to go for walls so i'm probably going to go something like mass production into siege tactics and the reason for that is monarchy if you get renaissance walls you get plus two culture in every city which will make up for the fact that i don't have a lot of culture so i think that's how we're going to play out the mid game here uh, you step one tile to the left you step here you step up you step this way hit 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 step hit and then you hit perfect so we blew up that city none of my units are yet leveled but that's okay We'll keep that city. We're going to need a garrison. How close until my next governor title? Four turns. How long will this hold? 14 turns. So I should be able to get a unit over there in time. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's get that granary. If we can get the granary up, that'll buy us a little bit of time. Let's go ahead and chop out the casa. Mi casa, su casa. Su casa is mi casa. That's right. I did just steal your house. Linguistically. So we overshot the error score here a little bit. No, 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 no. Please don't crash. Siv. Siv, don't crash. Oh! we didn't crash amazing so she's mad that's respectable i could respect someone who's mad oh i need to stop touching the screen come on don't crash damn something about these movies these uh these ai generated movies are maybe maybe this is the source of some of my crashes people used to get mad when i would turn them off i think i'm gonna go turn them off real quick i'm, I'm turning them off because i've been getting like weird hangs when i open these screens uh and it's making me feel like the game could crash if i don't so we've got the harbour in Bergen. That's perfect. We definitely want to get the lighthouse. We're cranking out crazy good science right now. Now we're going to have to figure out a follow-up to that science. It's probably going to be mass settling. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of time to heal up on these boys. Because nobody leveled. But the good news is... 
my caravels can rush in and do a little bit of pillaging. We just need to get the city to start taking a bit of damage. Because they shouldn't be able to attack our boats for very much damage. But I definitely want to run through here and see if I can get some pillages off. Um, I should totally be building caravels to support this push. But I'm actually building the casa instead. Because I'm, you know, that's just the kind of gamer that I am. <laughs> like, oh, I should be building military right now? Let me just build more eco. <laughs> Wait, guys, I'm, I'm ecoing. I'm ecoing for another four rounds. But then, then I can build a military, I promise. I, I guess trading domes actually totally make sense in the city. Just because they'll make these tiles slightly better when they normally won't be. Yeah, I definitely think we'll continue to send. Look, man, those trade routes are so good 664 god damn uh you guys make it this way you head this way would be nice to have an admiral but i won't get one for a while so i'm expecting these walls to go up yeah so we got a little bit of damage in before the walls could go up which is ideal of course there's an emergency triggering stop please just let me have my war come on the little meteor shower over there that's perfect oh who voted it up wilhelmina Wow. But there's the Forbidden City. That's plus three combat strength, essentially. Um, let's get for... I'm going to go for military engineering to get nighter and then square rigging to get frigates. I think that'll be the, the pathway out of here. So what is this pillage that's worth food? Step forward, pillage this. I feel like my faith is really weak. Is it is the Viking longship the pillaging ship? Hang on. Viking... Why is my pillage yield so weak? I guess I'm just pillaging weak districts, I guess. We've got all our trade routes coming online. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I think I'm going to wait for the siege tower to make it to the front line. And then we'll make a siege tower push on Majibahit. Hopefully and that'll work out for us. If it doesn't work out, we still got a city for like very low investment. They have a catapult in the city. That's actually quite smart from the AI to put a siege unit in a city to defend it from boats. Because that's like the, the actual way you defend a city. So there's Temple of Artemis and we've also unlocked guilds. I don't think guilds really changes our game plan. You step forward. You could step forward twice and then pillage. There's horseback riding. You could step forward once and pillage. Pillage. Um, you could step around. You can't quite get a pillage. May as well tuck you in here into Badung. You may as well level up. We want to start our turn outside our territory with these Vikings in an ideal world because they get more movement that way. So Pingala... Yeah, I think we go for Victor here because he provides the AoE uh, loyalty. If we get Victor... Up to here to Garrison Commander, it's plus four loyalty towards cities within six tiles or whatever it is. Maybe it's ten tiles, I don't remember. We should take Suzerainty of Antanarivo. And we have an envoy sitting around. We should retake Suzerainty of... Probably Singapore is fine. Yeah, so we're going to be fighting for a lot of envoys, but we are making an insane amount of influence points per turn, and that's only going to go up as the game goes on. We're going to be the envoy king. It's like being the drift king, but in Civ. Uh, let's faith purchase a berserker. Because we just, we just will need a lot of units and we want to be able to throw units away um, at our enemies. Ideal circumstances. Well, it's in ideal, but it's what we're going to be doing. Now, he has man-at-arms. We could just ignore Majiba hit and go around and pillage everything else. Um, I'll have a little bit of a think about that. Definitely pillage this aqueduct. That's worth 97 gold. I've got a huge amount of gold and faith in the bank. Get these bear shirkers out into the water. Go ahead and Faith purchase another bear shirker. What have we got here? So we're into a new era. Just dealt with a casual little power outage that completely obliterated my uh, internet connection for an hour. You know, not a big deal. We're going to go straight back into monumentality. We're done with free inquiry. We're still at war and we were doing interesting things while at war, but I have to replay this entire turn, which, you know, has me slightly miffed. You know, if I'm on a miffed scale, I'm on, I'm on like a, a five or six on the miffed scale. TBH fam, TBH. Uh, I do need to get this great general in range of the city. We can do some serious work here. Although I might play slightly defensively. Although that said, these units are stronger on the offense. So we should take hits on the offense where possible. Because that's when we're at our strongest. Plus the more offensive we are, the more likely they think they're going to lose. Bish bash bosh, all the good things happen. I'm going to keep a consistent flow of berserkers. I can buy a berserker nearly every single turn. Uh, but I also would like to make sure that I'm buying enough settlers. Ooh, there is a thing here that I can grab. Another one of these. I'll probably use this heavy chariot to escort. And I should look around and start choosing locations for cities. And I want to choose based on high harbor adjacency and high Holy side adjacency. We have quite a few good locations. Some really good land to my left. And there's some quite okay land to my north and northeast. Although I'm a little bit worried about this caravel stuff and barbs up here. I should be able to deal with it reasonably. Uh, the best harbour in this area is right there. Which means we want to settle adjacent to that harbour. If I settle here I can get this crab. That crab will be in range of that city. So I think I'm going to settle on the wheat. And then the most logical place for the holy site to go is right there. So that's this city taken care of. I could settle on the silver. Over. It's not a terrible location. I think this will just be a one city area. I Maybe I'll squeeze a second city in to like here actually. Ooh, well. 
maybe there one two three yeah maybe right there i'll put a second city because that way i can do this i can put a really nice harbor right there and a really nice holy site right there and then that should take care of all the city's adjacency. I'm loving, I'm loving this Holy Side Harbor gameplay. It's actually so cool, so much fun. I should maybe think about what, what I, I don't know what my transition victory is. So do I transition into a military victory? Am I going to go into boat production? Do I just start cranking out caravels and stuff like that? Um, do I try to snowball off of murdering people? Let's have a little bit of a look at what our options are. So we could go for a science victory. We can go for a culture victory. We can go for a conquest victory. We can go for a religious victory. We can go for a diplomatic victory. I would say personally, based on the current standing of the game, I don't want to go for a culture victory. A couple of my last games have been culture based. I think maybe conquest would be most interesting. I did go Warlord's Throne. I have a pretty strong military faction on a naval map. Uh, I could get to aircraft relatively quickly here. So it's probably between science and domination. Now, if I take a look at the city, I have a holy site, I have an encampment, and I have a harbour. So I think we're going to go for a domination because this feels like it lines up way more with a domination victory. One thing that I may want to consider is just making sure that my late game economy is still like relatively efficient. For example, I could get a what looks to be a five city overlap by putting a entertainment complex right here. That's five extra amenities. Uh, three for this city plus five. That's eight amenities from a single district. That would be super efficient. And we're not too far off picking up zoos. Like we're only a few techs away. So I think prepping for that could be a reasonable thing to do. Setting my economy up for like high quality um, amenities. Amenities are going to be important just to maintain my economy and also, you know, to prevent taking negative so I will go for the entertainment complex over here we did get the lighthouse which does mean that we have a new what do you call it a new trade route available so I'm thinking Stavanger I will go ahead and purchase well does Bergen have a trade route no Bergen does not have a trade route so let me go ahead and faith buy a trader in here I will faith buy a pagoda as well ah maybe I shouldn't have faith bought the pagoda but I can get to work on the ancient walls I would love if Valletta was in the game I don't think Valletta is in the game uh, but I should definitely look into faith buying some settlers i definitely want two settlers which means i'm probably going to need a caravel to send north to protect as well so let me buy a caravel in here you've just placed your district so i can safely buy settlers i want to wait in this city before i buy a settler i don't want to buy a settler there i can buy i'll buy my settlers in sarpsborg at least until i maybe consider getting the provision promotion on magnus Ooh, plus one movement on settlers trained in that city too that could actually be really pog let's get the city repaired up oh, take six turns to get the city back chooching along don't forget that we would also like to have the builder card plugged in because we are able to faith purchase builders and there's certain locations in my empire right now where i'm working unimproved tiles where i think a builder would make a big difference how badly do i want a lumber mill i think i want at least one lumber mill in the city of sarpsborg so i'll faith buy a builder there next turn i'm definitely faith buying a builder here there's quite a few tiles to improve and finally i made it to chinguetti so i can come in here and upgrade these man gold upgrading units is actually super efficient super 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 efficient right now, I'm pretty sure these can't be built adjacent to each other. Yeah, they can't be. Um, you're hanging out on that hill. I may as well put lumber mills on the flat tiles and I'll chop the non-flat tiles. I think that kind of appeals to me. Let's put down a fishery just for the sake of it. Just like, you know, a cute little fishery. Seems like fun. Should probably place a few fisheries in my capital. Like there's a good fishery there at least. At least one good fishery right there. Really, really nice. And also I should totally look into actually improving the tiles in here, which I will do by getting a builder. We almost have Casa de Contracion. Contracion? I don't know how to pronounce it. But yeah, we don't want to attack the city until we have the great general and the um the siege tower in range plus we're waiting to maybe get a frigate or two to help with this war too that would be quite nice a bit of ranged support oh wow i was not expecting my guy to actually take damage there well i suppose what we'll do is in order to support this war uh, i would like melee units to get plus combat strength and then i would like them to be cheaper with either faith or production but i faith would be amazing because i could like well yeah faith or production would be fine and then I will give these to Hojo. There's Casa de Contracion. There's three governor promotions, which is really helpful. Uh, they're cheaper to purchase with gold, believe it or not. I have a relatively good gold income. And plus five combat strength on melee units is actually huge. There's diplomatic service. I think I can bring my caravel around and actually get a kill on that knight. Just about missed the kill. Let's go ahead and take the battle cry promotion so you're even more offensive. We'll bring you forward. Bring you forward. You're coming up. You're coming up. You're coming up. Just want to stay on the edge, the edge of glory here. You go ahead and pillage that. Oh, I could coastally raid this plantation. I will do that and I'll bring you around and hit Mataram. I've almost got the siege tower in position. I'll bring the caravel around because the caravels can assist here. I don't know if caravels benefit from adjacency. This city will have reasonably good production, so it'd be good to have more food, right? Yeah, we're at a housing limit, so I'm going to go ahead and build a fishery. That'll get us up to eight pop. 
Perfect. We have diplomatic service, so we would like to get spies. I think the next step for us is to possibly head for nationalism. Being able to combine my guys together would be amazing. I would also like to maybe get Grandmaster's Chapel. I definitely feel like I need to get Chancery. That's plus three influence per turn. We did just finish the lighthouse in Oslo. Uh, let's go ahead and get the monument, Granary. I kind of skipped the monuments this game, which was probably a mistake. Um, but we're going to go ahead and faith by a trader in Palembang to start expanding that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take provision on Magnus so that we can faith by settlers more easily. We're going to take Garrison Commander on Victor and potentially Embrasure as well. Because what I can do then is I could faith buy Berserkers out of here and then they're much closer to reinforce uh, and they start with a free promotion which is basically just like a heel in the bank. Yes, 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 yes. So Sarpsborg, I think I can safely do a bit of mining. I can also safely buy a settler in here without hurting the population growth. This caravel here is escorting to protect. Berserkers are on the way. Berserkers are on the way. In the water. Lumber mill. I'm not going to chop the flatland tiles. I think uh, that would be a mistake. Let's trade with Nidoros. Sick as hell tiles. I will chop hills though. Well, I'm, I'm taking a surprising amount of damage here. Genuinely, um, genuinely a little bit surprised by how hard these guys are going. But I can do this. I can get you out of here and bring in replacements fairly easy. I can hit him pretty hard. I'm wondering where they're getting all their damage from. Maybe it's just the knights are doing well. Let's pillage this. Step in. Hit that city. It's good that we're splitting up his forces. Uh, you get up here to protect. Great General is up. Caraval, Caraval. Siege Tower is almost in position. Trade with Nidoros for 6 feet 6 production. You have the Entertainment Complex. I would like to build the Armory. This will actually give me plus one nighter per turn. Uh, that's one of the changes of the BBG mod that I really, really like. Is if you build encampments and like encampment buildings, you can actually get nighter per turn. It's super, super, super good. Um, I'm not sure where I'm getting nighter right now. Bonus sources. Maybe it's when you discover Niter you get plus one Niter per turn as well. I think that might be a thing actually. But yeah, if I can get this armory up, then I'll have a little bit of Niter to make frigates. Uh, another trade route was finished here. Um, let's get that holy site. Settler in the water. I'm friends with Japan, so I don't need to worry about that, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm declared friends with Japan, so he can't declare war on me. Don't need to upgrade you. Don't need to upgrade you. Could upgrade you, don't need to. Could upgrade Divine Architect. Don't need to upgrade Divine Architect. I think I would rather go for Reyna now, and I'll put Reyna in Oslo for now. She might get moved, but we'll, we'll maybe re-optimize how we do our governors. I uh, continue to trade with Nidoros. I need those stats. I just need raw food, raw production. Just get that pumping. Now, you might make an argument that it would be better for me to go um, send those to, to other sources, but I think in this current situation, stats is everything for me. But yeah, most of my faith should be going towards... Oh, no. A caravel here. Can I faith buy? It's land units that are cheap, isn't it? Oh no, caravels are quite cheap too. I wonder if I can sell some Diplo favor. There we go. And maybe I can sell spare luxuries. I don't know how these are spare, but I mean, sure. I will go ahead and faith buy, sorry, gold purchase a caravel in here to fight off this barbed caravel. And maybe we were just slightly slow with the berserkers or something. I'm not sure what it was. Maybe our faith gain, our culture gain was probably just too weak, to be honest with you. Probably the answer. Um, do I want to bring, no, I need to spend my faith on settlers. I was going to say, do I want to bring some religious units to see if we can maybe convert some of these cities for extra combat strength? While I would like to do that, I think I would much rather just focus on the obliteration that's happening. I mean, look, we're winning these contacts pretty well. Um, you go ahead and take the battle cry promotion. You can step forward and get a kill. You can promote and then switch and then you can kill. Perfect. So stunning victory. The city is now under siege. So any damage we do is permanent. Let's you go here, go here, pillage that. You step there, get that heal. You get into Palembang to heal. Well, no, you should heal outside the city because I would like to faith buy a berserker with a promotion in here. Fight there, Caraval. Good work. You had this way. I think that might be the last berserker that I buy. We should be fine from there on out. Oh, I shouldn't have built a lumber mill on a hill. That was a mistake. Oh, well. But you tread in dangerous water, make common cause. So we built an armory. What are their city-state missions do we have, actually? Sending trade routes, building, recruiting, and converting. Also triggering a Eureka for military tactics, which is killing a unit with a spearman. I think I'm just going to research that to get that to reset. Um, and then we'll make our way towards mass production. Although I think I would like to get apprenticeship too for plus one mine production. Uh, taking a look at the city of the Bergen, we have holy sites, we have harbors. What is the best way for me to transition this city into a useful thing. Um, I mean, 
more culture wouldn't be terrible, but I don't really need the culture. I don't have a particularly good campus locations. I do have good, like this is a plus four theater square. That could be worth it to build it on its own, just for the fact that that's four culture, plus another little bit of culture from building the amphitheater buildings, plus the potential from the great works. There is potential there to take this city to the next step if I were to go for a theater square. So I'm just going to go for theater square on value. I don't need the theater square, but I just want the extra culture. We do in fact have the armory in here. I'm going to take two turns to build this. So now that we have the armory, we should be pulling in a little bit of nitre and that will transition into uh, some frigates when we have the ability to. You get up in there. You're going to have to come all the way around with this settler to this location. I think I can yoink that builder. Yoink Arino. I can also kill this pikeman for free, which I absolutely will be doing. Um, I'll build a quarry here. It's rare that I would do this, but it's a flatland tile. I'm not a huge fan of harvesting flatland tiles. I'll do it, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Uh, so we definitely want to pillage this. Perfect. There's apprenticeship boosted. I'll save your heal in the bank. You're going to step back this way and pillage for health. Bring the caravels forward. I would love to condemn. It doesn't seem particularly interesting though to me. I think what I need to do is to just get as much damage value on this city as possible. You should survive. And if you don't, then that opens up an opportunity. Right. So we've we laid off a few attacks. The city's already coming down. This is the power of a siege tower with berserkers. They just like, you know, once you, once you have military superiority, there's very little someone can do to stop you. I don't like that caravel being there. If I attack one more time with this guy, he will level and keep this city's health relatively low. And we want to keep that city's health suppressed, even though we can't take it right now. Uh, we did just get the chance. So we need to think about our next thing. I feel like Grandmaster's Chapel just weaves so well into a domination victory, a faith-based domination victory, which is just really, really nice. Uh, we have the library in here. The city is like severely lacking in builders. I think a single builder purchase in here, a single settler purchase in the capital, and then... We will get to work on the barracks because it would just be nice to be able to get another armory up for even more nitre to support more frigates and stuff like that. Uh, build a mine right there. Perfect. Build a mine right there. And we're continuing to develop our territory so that we make overwhelming amounts of production. A 77 per... Jesus. 77 production in my capital. That is crazy. Nice thing is now we have built a canal so we can squeeze our way through here. Um, so the very first thing you're going to do is slap down your harbor and then get to work on your granary and your monument. We'll get to work on those keep you busy for a little bit while we will help these cities develop themselves once we have once we have spare economy right now our economy is going into war um once we have the spare eco to do that is it worth it yeah i think it's worth it to hit with the ships here partially because the ships will get experience and partially because they'll do damage to the city which just seems based um so here's a builder i'll send him over here to the east maybe they'll try to recapture that builder you never know so he just pillaged for a heal annoying pillaging my fishing boats to heal okay we took a little bit of damage but nothing we can't handle caravel took a hit here but it's healing there's a plus three or higher adjacency theater square um let's immediately go into amphitheater that'll get us plus three culture we're getting that culture number really really high and it's important to get that culture number really high because we want to get to things like mobilization and we want to get to things like fascism so getting that number up a little bit higher actually has long-term really really good long-term benefits now is palambang yeah palambang has a city has a trade route rather um so i have some promotions i should look for you should attack the city you should take the city because you'll get a promotion from killing it perfect so he promoted tortoise is probably worth taking here against these city shots especially badung will have a crossbow in it but i think we can very safely go take out mataram now we managed to get a th arena in sarpsborg there's a lot of wonders we could build here oh god is it, I feel like I have to go for Colosseum. It's just so much value. Plus one culture, plus two loyalty, and plus two amenities to all cities within six tiles. That's 10 amenities. That's so good. I need to get it. For a four turn build time? Absolutely. How could I pass that up? Otherwise, these newly captured cities, I'll just start doing a lot of repairs in them. You're coming this way. Um, so planning out the city, we'll focus on getting fishing boats and mines up to get it back under control. Take a little bit of time to heal on these caravels. Take a little time to promote on these caravels. Look for more coastal pillages and stuff like that. I could be sending boats to coastally pillage Netherlands but I don't think that's necessary she's kind of far away we still do need to like optimize our cities and that definitely is going to involve rebuilding or just building fishing boats like I have a tree charge builder here and there's two fishing boats over here that haven't been built now in a perfect world I would have the um the guy that gives me a builder whenever I settle a city but I'm gonna have to faith buy my own builders and kind of develop those cities Ooh, run away don't get caught by that horseman okay so where is this settler going I feel like there might be another settlement over here. I've got Niter. Let me have a look. Where's where's the city being settled? Where's the harbor going? And where's the 
a holy site going? That's like the three questions we need to answer. And in my mind, we want to be as close to fishing boats as possible because we get so much value out of them. So like there's almost a perfect harbor right here. And I mean, if I put a holy site here and I settle on the niter, that's like pretty based. Gets all three of these fishing boat tiles, claims most of this island. We don't claim this part off, but the problem is it settles really, really close to their loyalty. Damn, that would have been good. I could always move the city. Why is that? Wait, how is the, why is the loyalty not as bad on this wheat tile? That makes no sense. I guess I won't settle that direction. Um, how about we settle to the west over here? Oh, I want to settle in and around this high, this, well, it's fairly low quality land, but there's a luxury there that I'd like to get grab. Having spare luxuries is always nice. Yeah, the land quality here is quite low. I'm not going to lie. Um, probably the best thing to do is to settle a city right here. Harbour, right there. Holy site, right there. Bush, bush, bush. Relatively high quality. That leaves me with just enough room for either a canal city or a copper city. Copper city, I think, is better. Let's see, harbour and then holy site or... What about harbour here? How does that look? Yeah, I think you want to use the holy site in the adjacency as often as possible because it's a plus three. If you build it in this triangle, this is like just ridiculously good. Super, super, super powerful. Essentially, you're getting two and a half adjacency from the city centre and the holy site combined if you can get it adjacent to both. That's why it's a super efficient. The city doesn't have a whole lot of fishing tiles, but it will have at least some land to make use of. So I'll start sending a settler that way. She wants to buy my nighter. I'd like to keep my nighter to make quads. Speaking of quads, I need to like start buying quads. Uh, and I think I will buy them with gold because it's probably the best way to do it. Right, let's take the Caravel Combat Strength promotion. I think that one's the best. Instantly creates a privateer, Renaissance and Industrial Era. That would include my Caravel. So I will make use of this guy in combat. I'll put him inside the city of Nidoros and then teleport him to the front line. And then I will get him to link up with a Caravel who will then heal up. So Mataram's my next target, but I need to get some healing. Right. You can go to there and then take the tortoise promotion. You can get all the way to here, which is fantastic. You can get to there. Um, I can start bringing some caravels around. Improve that fish. Perfect. You take it. Ooh, actually. Hit that crossbowman once to force him to retreat. You go there. You're going to heal. You go there. Oh, you lost a little bit of movement. That's okay. You have a promotion, but I don't need to get it this turn. Almost have my siege tower to the city of Mataram, which will allow me to completely obliterate it again. We did just get the Grandmaster's Chapel. So now when we pillage, we get a little bit of extra faith. See here. Uh, pillaging improvements to districts provides bonus faith, and we get five faith per turn, as well as one governor title. And speaking of governor titles, I think I want to get Harbour Master on Reina so that I double the adjacency of my harbours, particularly because she's in a city with a pretty reasonable harbour. Plus three. Ah, the fishing boat was killed. That's the problem. And I haven't finished the holy site. Right. Faith by another settler. We want to get as many of these out as we can this era. Pop you up there. Fight these carvels. These barbs need to be dealt with. They've been kind of like running amok a little bit. So with the Grand Master's Chapel, I will pre-build a few quads. There's no wonders that I can justify building right now. So we'll leave that there. You can chop. I may as well chop out some quads, actually. Chop out the spy as well. Nah, I'd rather get the quads out faster. These quads directly turn into frigates, which directly influences my position on the map in terms of power. So that seems significant to me. Although then again, I can just gold purchase quads because they're half price, which is what I'm going to do in Bergen, I guess. Yeah, 120 gold for quad rooms is like a disgustingly cheap price. Disgustingly cheap. We have a barrack. Let's get the armory. We want to get more of that niter per turn. And the great general points too aren't terrible either. Like definitely I'm not turning my nose up at that. There's a little bit of faith. Ooh, ooh, liking that. That's cute. Lots of faith from pillaging. Oh shit. Yeah, we, we should be pillaging for faith. Oh my God. Norway is such a good faith sieve, dude. I never even really considered Norway as like a faith pillaging sieve, but it actually works so well. The, BB the BBG version of Norway is actually just better. It's just, it's just built different. All right, we'll settle here. Boom. New new continent, actually, believe it or not. That was a different continent, so that's worth a little bit of error score. I would, I would be happy with a normal age, but if I could get a golden age, I would be delighted. I might go for a Jebel Barkal here. Jebel Barkal awards six iron per turn, but also plus four fate to all cities that are within six tiles. And I'm pretty sure that's at least a four city hit on Jebel. Yeah, that's a four city hit on Jebel. So that's a, uh, what, 16 faith per turn? That's pretty respectable. We got the holy site in Stavanger. Um, the city's just really lacking a builder. So I'm going to have to kind of balance between buying settlers and builders and stuff like that. I need to get my third district. I went for that. I've gone for a lot of utility stuff. Something that would like directly help my military might not be terrible. I don't need commercial hubs. A campus might be okay. Well, I need to get my I need to get my holy sites and my walls up for the for the culture. Kind of forgot that I was doing walls for culture. Go ahead and faith purchase a builder. I could probably gold purchase builders in all honesty, but I'm gonna gold purchase a couple more quads, and I think that should be enough quads. I think five frigates should be enough to start off things. You're a little bit hurt. You're hurt, you're fine. Build that. 
you're here to pillage, but just hang out. Get the siege tower moved up. You're going to move to the left one. You're going to move to the left two. The city is now under siege. You have a promotion so I can be aggressive. And when I say you have a promotion, I mean he has it in the bank. He's ready to use it. God damn, Jesus. Berserker is hitting cities, dude. It's actually absurd how badly we just obliterated Mataram. Like we took that, we, atta we, we, we attacked the city for the first time this turn. That's insane. Let's get that caravel to the city to heal up. I don't know how many more cities she has. It can't be many. Nice, my berserkers are taking damage, but that's what we want them to do. The more times they get hit, oh my goodness, oh my god. There's the Colosseum. Now it's not as good as it is in the base game, but still, plus two amenities and plus one culture to all cities in the area. That's super, super, super good. Like super efficient. Um, I don't need the statue of Zeus. Terracotta army could be pretty based. Mont Saint Michel, I don't particularly need. Um, the only one I'm thinking of is getting Terracotta Army, and I think that's a reasonable one to get. It'll give me a promotions on all my Berserkers, which will allow me to transition them into maybe a more useful role later on. Gives me good Berserker tempo, basically. All right, let's get these bad boys back to the front line. We've got a couple more cities to take with the assistance of this Siege Tower. It would be nice to know more. I hate the bug where if you fortify with a boat unit they just sit there forever and they're like oh fortify like oh you sit end your turn my turn is over dude you can never change your mind whereas most of the units you can change your mind definitely light on trade routes uh what are the possibility that i get an artist this turn this game zero so if i have zero chance of artist i go for archaeological museum that's fine <clears throat> one turn until we have uh frigates and we we don't quite have enough niter, but we don't need enough niter because we can actually come in here, take out feudal contract, plug in retinues, which will make units cheaper to produce for resources as well. Now, I really want to plug in the pillaging card. I don't quite have it plugged in right now. I don't think I'm going to make any builders for just a moment, so I'll just have that plugged in until I'm ready to switch out another card. Uh-huh. You go here, do that. You should heal. Okay. I definitely want to chop that tile because I don't like having jungle around. Dave Church on the way. God damn, this caravel is just like milked every single tile that I have for healing. And it's just like being annoying. Jesus, can you make a run for it? Can you assist? Yep, taking a little bit of damage on that Berserker. But we did 67 damage back, so it's not worrying. Oh, shoot. I was not expecting him to pull that off. Let's buy another Caraval. Um, but it is Frigate time. And the only thing I'm lacking is gold. So let me sell off this Diplo Favor. 230 gold should be enough for me to get a few of these Frigates. Five Niter ain't bad. I'm making two Niter per turn. I'm on my way to make three per turn. So I should be able to get these guys upgraded relatively quickly. Um, what's the next stop for me? We definitely need to get shipyards. I've been delaying shipyards for forever. And it's actually just, it's just such a mistake. The shipyard delay is honestly just such a mistake. I should have really rushed shipyards if I was playing correctly. But, you know, sometimes you get caught up in wars and you're you're just having fun. You're not super, you're not worried about playing Omega Giga optimally. You're just kind of having a good time. The cool thing is I can get these guys to jump in the water and they're still roughly equally as fast. I wish I had a way to deal with the crossbowmen inside that city but i don't i do have a spy now i think i would either like to steal i think this war is basically over so i'm just going to send it to london to steal gold i think london is a relatively rich faction or england is a relatively rich rich faction rather all right let's have a little bit of a gander shall we let's fall back and heal up in chinguetti there's a lot of nonsense going on over here the interesting thing it's interesting to have a melee unit because normally melee units are blockers and defensive and to have a melee unit that excels on the offense but crumbles on the defense is an interesting idea. I think this version of it is kind of better executed than the original game version where like they were made of like total paper, like actual paper um, on the defense. This one, it's just a regular unit on the defense rather than being like super giga weak, which I think works a little bit better. All right, so we're starting to surround Badung. It's beginning to happen. I have frigates in the mix as well. And that's doing me some favors. Go ahead and build the walls. So may as well get those walls going. I think we go shipyards into walls. We've got the armory in Palembang. Grab an archaeological museum for a little bit of culture so we can get ahead of things. Boosh. Um, it would be good to get Susan to have a second faith city-state, I think. So I'm going to put, well, there's no point putting those in, in there yet. I'll put two more into Chinguetti because that will actually boost my current faith per turn. Um, and then we'll continue to purchase settlers and builders where we need them. Now, uh, this brand new city could actually use a trader. If I sent that trader to the capital, it'll get like it up and running a little bit faster. Boosh, another city is settled. Perfect. Starting to capture the world. I like this. This is a fun build. This is the kind of build that I would always, I, I would do myself in the normal game. God, BBG just improves the Civ so much. I'm surprised that their warriors are doing so much damage. I wonder why their warriors are so strong. These like little weaklings. These guys are goaded. They have 40 combat strength. What is happening? Military advisory and support bonus. I guess that makes sense. Although he left his crossbow in a really exposed position. In fact, I think I get to just wipe the board here, essentially. If I can get you to kill this, you to kill this. 
Yeah, that's the closest we're going to get to a board wipe here. And we also have the siege tower in range. Um, we don't have any more bear shirkers coming. I'm going to faith buy a pair with promotions and send them up to the front line. I don't know why I call them bear shirkers. I just, I heard someone say it one time <laughs> and then I, I couldn't stop saying it. So let's think about our long-term success here in Nidoros. Nidoros is two turns away from growing to 13 population, which does mean another district. That could be a variety of districts. I could go for an encampment. I could save room for an aerodrome. Uh, I could go for a science district. I don't think I need a science district. I could reassign Pingala into the city for science if I really, really wanted to. What's going to be our late game play? It's probably going to consist of bombers, destroyers, carriers, battleships, all that sort of stuff. So the thing that goes in that direction is waiting for an aerodrome slot, um, which means I have two turns. I don't have the builder card plugged in. Yeah, I have two turns to do something interesting in here. Hold on. I want to make sure I get my... Ah, I need one more nighter. I need six more nighter and then we're, we're good on frigates. I think building an encampment to have extra strategic resources for my military would be good. I don't have any wonders that I can build, Sag. I could also just hard build settlers um, to continue to expand. Pagoda. Speaking of settlers, I'll go ahead and faith buy a pet settler in here too. But yeah, I'm going to need a lot of, um, need a lot of settlers to improve my land. Coastally raiding for score. We're two turns from nationalism, which should be a big upgrade to our army actually. So I'd like to siphon funds from London. I'll gain sources and then begin siphoning. So what's our current status in Bedung? I think we're just about ready to take this city. Blast it with a frigate to bring the walls down. You step to the side. You taking a lot of damage to hit this city. Although the city only has city shots, so I don't have to worry too hard. But I think on the cusp of Indonesia falling, I'm going to go ahead and leave that episode here so you guys can speculate on what we're going to do next. It's probably going to involve settling all this land here and then maybe building up a massive military and conquering the world. But I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.